Hello, this is Andrew Ford for Photo Focus, and today we're going to look at another way to stabilize shaky footage. I've done a tutorial on the stabilized motion feature of track motion, but today we're just going to use the warp stabilizer effect. Arguably easier, gives a slightly different result. So as you can see here, we're playing some shaky footage, and we're going to highlight the layer, go to Effect, Distort, and Warp Stabilizer. This effect has to analyze in the background, it takes a little bit to get started. Once it does, you'll see up here in the upper left corner of the effect that it will begin to analyze each frame. This five second clip will have about 150 frames. There it goes. Once it starts going, you can see it's relatively quick. And after it analyzes the frames, step two, it stabilizes. And once the orange bar goes away, your clip is ready. Now, if we play the clip, you can see it's very smooth. This effect has done a remarkable job. But it has done a slightly different job than stabilized motion from the motion tracker did. This is because our result is set to smooth motion. Smooth motion can add a subtle camera effect to help stabilize the video. In this instance, we can see that it's doing a slight downward camera tilt. Now, you do have the option to choose no motion, and this will lock down the camera so there'll be no camera movement. But as you can see, the payoff for this is that you have cropped in more the auto scaling has jumped up. So when we play this, yes, you have perfectly stable motion, but you have sacrificed some of the image. As you can see in the auto scale here, this has scaled it to 117%, whereas when we did the smooth motion, it only scaled it to 101.7%. That's barely anything. So I would leave it on that in this case. And you have a subtle camera tilt, which is actually kind of nice. Now the method of warp stabilizer is really the brains of the operation. There are several options here. The default is subspace warp. Subspace warp warps various parts of the frame subtly. Your other options would be to use the position data, the position scale and rotation data, or perspective. Perspective is sort of like a corner pinning. Since subspace warp has performed perfectly here, I would leave it as that. Under borders, you have the framing option. This is set to stabilize crop and auto scale. This is quite fine because it barely auto scaled it at all. I would stay away from stabilized synthesized edges. That uses data from other frames to make judgments. The problem with this, if you don't need it, is it takes a much longer time to render. You can see even the preview here is taking a while. So since we got great results with the stabilized crop auto scale framing, I would leave it as that. Under the advanced options, there's a lot here. We don't need to go into detail during this tutorial. One interesting thing to note though is this crop less to smooth more slider. Right now it's on 50%. If we put it to 0%, you will see that we see more of the image. We have less crop, but there's a trade-off for that. Some of the shake is gonna come back. Watch as we play this. Not as much shake as we had originally, but not really acceptable. If you slide it the opposite way to 100% smoothness, you'll see you lose a little bit of the image, but you're gonna get a perfectly stable picture. In this instance, it's worth cropping that tiny bit to get a very smooth image. So Warp Stabilizer is another great way to stabilize shaky footage, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you.